Good to see everybody. How's it going? Good, Greg. It's, uh, it's great to be here. It seems like the weeks just kind of fly by and all of a sudden we're back to yeah. you know, uh, just to get a chance to hang out together. See you, Jennifer. <laughs> see you, Baylor. <laughs> I wanted to read a passage. It's from Psalm uh, Psalm 100, and it speaks to uh, what uh, Larry and the worship team were just uh, sing, singing about. Be still, my soul. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we can be going through a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. and yet when we get with God, who is the Good Shepherd, mm-hmm. um, He He stills our souls. And, and you know, there's that passage in in Psalm uh, Psalm uh, 46 that we were just talked about. Be still, mm-hmm. uh, for I am God. And that's a lot of you just being together this morning. Is there a sense of security because we're digging our roots a little bit deeper yeah. in who he is and not what's going on around us? Is there a sense of security because we're, we're trusting his power, not our own power, to, uh, to get us through and to help us move forward? You know, we're, we're putting our faith in him as uh, the wise one. That we don't have to necessarily just rely on ourselves for our own perspective, but we can put our faith and, and our trust in him. And he's going to lead us and guide us powerfully mm-hmm. and faithfully. Psalm 100 says this, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, (coughs) the the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, and his love is good endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. So today uh, we're going to start uh, a little series that we're going to have it right. moving forward in the spring and summer. It's a series about the Good Shepherd. Come on. And it's a series today we're going to start off with the first uh, verse of Psalm 23, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, it's, it reminds me a little bit how that starts as a kid. Like when we have, you know, both myself and my brother would have a friend. And we're like, no, he's my friend. <laughs> That's my friend over there. And we'd be kind of possessive of it yeah. because it was kind of special to us. Yeah. And that's kind of how David seems like he's coming across us. We'll talk about that more here in a moment. But he's saying the Lord is my shepherd. Mm-hmm. And as we read, we just read about in Psalm 100, yeah. boy, that's a pretty awesome shepherd to have. Mm-hmm. The God who created everything, including us, mm-hmm. and knows how to direct us, knows how to guide us, guide us knows how to comfort us knows how to take us into all eternity. So let's pray to God, and then Sue's going to share a little bit, and we'll, we'll kind of get into, into the scriptures here a little bit this morning. Mm-hmm. Father, thank you so much for this incredible opportunity. We're not just kind of showing up at an event. We're coming before mm-hmm. you, That's right. and we can shout with joy. Father, like the earth is beginning to do all around us, mm-hmm. it, the, the springing forth of springtime it literally is singing praise to you, its creator. Mm-hmm. Father, help us to be the same. And help us as we look into the scriptures, Father, to feel that deep sense of connection with you, the giver of life, the source of all life. And Father, help us to be more full of life as we go off in this place we could be, because we've truly connected, we've truly been inspired, we've truly celebrated what we have in you and in Christ. Lead us and guide us powerfully this morning as we study your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so I have a new outlook on life looking out at the uh, Lake Champlain this morning. You want to know why? Mm-hmm. Okay, come on. Because yesterday I got certified to be a fishing yeah. instructor. Wow. 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 Right down there on the docks, um, right there. So anyway, what I do want to share, um, it was so fun yesterday because I think I just like, first of all, I was really nervous because I'm like, I have no idea. Do I have to take a really big test to get certified? Or I'm going to be like, I'm feeling all these things. So I had no idea. So I'm going to go. And I was just sort of had that mindset driving with Steve up there, just going, I'm just going to have some time. Just going to have fun and love learning, because that's just all about. Whenever I get, like, like freaked out about a new situation, like, i got to be on, i got to have all the right answers, I'm like, I'm just going to love learning. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was so special for me. There's, like, 30 of us there. And um, one of the things I love, again, I have a passion for fishing a lot because Jesus said that we get to be fishers of men. So I have a lot of passion for that because he wants to make me a fisher of people. And, um, but I do, you know, for me, it was interesting. There's about 30 of us and 80% of the people that were there at this clinic were there a lot for more like helping, um, helping vets, 
helping um, the, um, the underserved people in different communities, helping kids who don't have parents to be able to help them. And the equalizer of fishing, of being outdoors, it was just so powerful. Like, wow, I get to learn this new skill and this new opportunity to help people that are going through a lot. Like, you know, and it's just, it was just fascinating for me just to be able to be there and think about people that are working with migrant workers, people that are working with kids, people are, mm -hmm. that are working with kids that have ADHD or, or, or on um, different medications and being outdoors, just like literally it's scientifically proven that they don't even need to be on medication for some of these times and these weeks of trips of just being out in God's creation. Mm -hmm. One of the stories was a woman sharing about um, how this six-year-old caught this fish. She was so psyched that at one of these clinics that she, that this six-year-old finally caught this fish because um, she wanted him to see the power in nature, but it wasn't until the six-year-old touched the fish, he was like, oh, it's real. Mm -hmm. Like, just how virtual reality is like reality for so many kids right now growing up that literally the, the little boy had to literally physically touch it and go, oh, it's a real fish. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, one of, the, one of the women that was next to me, I didn't know if I was supposed to be all with people with like flannel shirts on and, and like trucker hats. I had no idea. <laughs> A lot of them were educators for, for elementary school and stuff like that. But um, one of the women next to me, she said, I'm a grandmother now, and I want my grandkids to have a tackle box instead of an Xbox in their hand. And I was like, that's the ultimate purpose. But anyway, it was, really, it was really special for me. And I think just more that love of learning. And I was thinking about, um, of course, I have all these like special events. Because like, what, what I get to do now is create my own clinic. And so, of course, I'm like, real time, you know, like, real time, but real time. <laughs> uh, for women, it's all these women in the professional world that just need to cast all their anxieties <laughs> on God. I'm getting all my cool ideas. But um, when I think about The Good Shepherd, I think about, you know, we, um, the church gave everybody this book last week, just more as a gift, but it's, a, of course, a great guide for what we're going to talk about. Um, moving forward, but just that we get to keep learning about the Good Shepherd Amen. and learning about how he feels about us. Yep. And I was thinking about how when it, even the very beginning, David, I think, wrote Psalm 23 to build our trust in God mm -hmm. and just to remind us of who he is. And it's interesting, it starts off the Lord, and then I think God uses the next 115 words of Psalm 23 to explain who that Lord is to us. And I'm really looking forward to learning that. I went through some new news this week with my family that was really rough mm -hmm. and really needing a good shepherd <laughs> to oversee my soul. But um, I do think when I think of the shepherd, I think of um, 1 Peter 5, 7. And of course, it's also part of my casting clinic. Um, I actually caught a, a fish, you know, on the parking lot. So just so you know, we were practicing some of these casts, and I actually caught a fish, a magnetic fish. I was feeling pretty good. <laughs> but in 1 Peter 5, this is my version of the shepherd that I love so much. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Unload all your worries onto him since he is looking after you. And then the other translation says, Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And I think about God being... He's our good shepherd that cares, but he also carries us. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, no other God can do that. All the other gods in the Old Testament, if you look, had to be carried, but mm -hmm. not our God. Our God carries us. And mm -hmm. just the honor that um, we have him to turn to 24-7 mm -hmm. and, uh, and truly cast our anxieties and our worries and our concerns on him. So <clears throat> it's not a lot. I just want to, I look forward to loving to learn more about what this great shepherd is going to help mm -hmm. me with in my own soul and how much I need him. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun just uh, picking up Sue from uh, her. And actually, at the next new place, we could see the what's it called? The National Building over there in the National, National, Life. Yeah. National Life Building. And I guess there's some, you know, there's some uh, government offices in there as well. And so the fishing and game uh, uh, department is is housed there. And so that's where I dropped Sue off. You know, uh, and it was really fun because we could see it over there. I was kind of checking on our friend <laughs> for 10 miles away. But, um, you know, it was really fun just, just hearing Sue's take. You know, she's getting in the car. She's so jazzed, not only to learn how to fish better, but, but the, the learning how fishing and being out in nature is such a great way for us mm -hmm. to 
uh, serve kids, you know, serve these these uh, these groups, these communities, mm-hmm. and serve ourselves. There's something that happens to us when we're out in God's creation that reminds us of the good stuff, reminds mm-hmm. us of the eternal stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so it was just really fun, uh, you know, just kind of going through the whole day with it there. Let's turn over to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm 23. All right. We're going to be putting some focus on this psalm. And, and the idea is not just to know more about it intellectually, but the idea is to internalize it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm really <laughs> convicted by the psalms because I, I don't feel like I can write any of them. They're, they're so soulful. They're so rich. They're so worshipful. They, they, you know, they, they place such a perspective on God that's, that literally makes our souls sort of soar and, and, and come alive. And, and, and it lifts us. And uh, the, the Psalms are amazing. I, read, I was reading this about the Psalms this past week. Uh, Psalms is the greatest collection of songs, poems, and prayers ever assembled. Some were likely performed by history's greatest worship band, which is King David's 4,000-piece orchestra. Did you hear that, Larry? 4,000-piece orchestra in 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 23, verse 5, written uh, uh, by authors, by various authors over a 1,000 years. Uh, these are Israel's greatest hits. Psalms is quoted in the New Testament more than any other book. It contains both the longest chapter, Psalm 119 in the Bible, and the shortest, Psalm 117. The most searched for Bible chapter on the internet is, what would people think? Psalm 23. Yeah. Psalm 23, yeah. The most searched for Bible chapter, Bible verses on the internet is Psalm 23. And the great thing about the Psalms is they are not sanitized Sunday school poems. Or the prayers of the well-behaved. <laughs> uh, you know, people who had it all together. Uh, you know, had all their, it says here, had all their picture frames level. It's not written by people like that. These are the honest heart cries of abandoned, hunted, and, um, and challenged people. And prayers of triumph and worship, too. There are three types of prayers in the Psalms. Uh, help with an exclamation point prayers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Awesome with an exclamation, an exclamation point prayers. And thanks with an exclamation point prayers. There's all sorts of prayers in, in the Psalms. And sometimes, guys, it's just awesome. Yeah. When we're going through things. I've been doing this recently at night. I've been, you know, I love kind of reading beach novels. You know, kind of like, you know, PG rated beach novels. You know, before I go to bed at night. Kind of the Tom Clancy type of novels. Because it helps me get my thoughts off the day. But sometimes it actually makes me a little bit more upset. Because, it, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's portraying all these, you know, all these challenges, these global challenges. And so what I've been doing recently is I just go to bed reading the Psalms. All right. Mm-hmm. And get out my, you know, I have my little cup of chamomile tea, <laughs> and I drink that, and I read the Psalms, and it's just, uh, it just I feel right. so much more enriched, and I feel like my mind has so much more healthy stuff mm-hmm. to, to meditate on as I sleep. And, uh, but, but the Psalms are amazing because the Psalms aren't sanitized Bible stories. Some of them are very disrespectful. <laughs> Some of them are, you know, portray a, per, a perspective on the world that you can tell a person is, is wrestling with. Some of them are real, you know, psalms of complaining mm-hmm. and arguing with God, working through real life situations yep. with God, working through pressures and challenges. And they're awesome because, because you realize that that's how God wants me to come before Him. Right. That's how mm-hmm. God wants me to walk humbly with Him. Mm-hmm. Yes, he wants me to be real. Yeah. He wants me to be fully me. Mm-hmm. I don't need to make up anything to try to fool God by a good facade because, because of course, it's not true. And, he, and he's looking at me. He's looking at yeah. us going, dude, I know you. I know that's not what you're feeling right now. Yeah. But I always find this. When I really express my heart to God with loud cries and tears, or maybe it's times of praise, or maybe it's just times of listening, and just, and just trying to hear his voice, mm-hmm. I find myself better find myself more filled up. Mm-hmm. I find my, I feel like the little synapses, the soulful mm-hmm. spirit synapses in me are starting to kind of come together. Yeah. And it's not that all my problems are solved, it's just that I feel a little bit stronger to be able to approach the real challenges of my life yep. you know, with God. And because I've gotten it out. Isn't it interesting that a good conversation doesn't usually solve anything that's going on out there? Sure. But there's such a power to a good conversation. Yeah. We feel so much better. We get with God and we really talk to him like a friend. 
like a father, or we get with a friend, or we get with a, someone that we trust, and we just talk. We, we go through that sort of talk therapy, that prayer therapy, and we feel so much better, but we also feel wiser. We also feel stronger. We also feel more able to approach the things that are going on around us than we did before. And so it's so important for us to build that habit of talking to God and walking with Him and knowing Him. And what Psalm 23 does is it really starts to help us and encourage us into that friendship, into that relationship with the Good Shepherd. So Psalm 23. Come on, Steve. David writes this psalm. And David, of course, is the, uh, the, the king shepherd. Okay, I also wanted to read this that I, that, I, that I wrote down. Psalm 23, a shepherd. God is a shepherd who never fails us. David was a shepherd long before God anointed him, uh, king of Israel. So it's only natural that he connects shepherding with God's constant protection. Sheep, this is us. In the, in, the, in the scriptures, sheep are totally dependent on their shepherd for everything. Yeah. They aren't dumb, but they're extremely social and easily frightened and influenced. <laughs> <laughs> they're perpetually afraid yeah. and won't drink from a swiftly flowing stream. <laughs> and they get antsy if they can't see other sheep when they're grazing in a field. <laughs> they flock together when they're afraid. But they'll blindly follow a leader, even if it leads to a deadly fall over a cliff. Sheep simply can't survive without the care of a loving shepherd. And so David says, the Lord is my shepherd. (laughs) And it's interesting because when he says right after this, I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Lord was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And if he needed something, God provided it. Mm -hmm. Good shepherd provided it. You know, most shepherds out there don't do that. Most shepherds are not faithful. (laughs) Most shepherds are not reliable. Most shepherds just aren't even nearly powerful enough to come through on their promises. But not God. God is the good shepherd. And it's an interesting thing to me. If we're feeling feeling malnourished, or if we're feeling overly afraid, and that becomes a pattern in our life that's not improving, what we've got to realize is we're following the wrong shepherd. Yeah. And I don't know who that is or what that is, but there's a shepherd issue in your life or in my life. Because God doesn't do that. God leads us to where there are no needs. God fulfills all of our needs. Throughout the scriptures, God says things like, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you Yes, He does as well. Our only responsibility, Mm -hmm. listen to this, our only responsibility in life is to follow the Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All our needs are met with that one choice. You know, there's a a point to this psalm I think we'll go back to over and over, is we get to choose our shepherd. And it talks about this in John chapter 10 too, where Jesus says, I'm the Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Let me ask you, who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? And what I'm asking this is on a daily basis. It doesn't do any good to be in the green pastures once or twice a year. Because the rest of the year, we're just, we're just wandering. The rest of the year, we're malnourished. The rest of the year, we're filled with bugs and, and, and challenges in our faith and our life. And we're going crazy. <laughs> but not with the good shepherd. Because the good shepherd takes time to, to take those... To take those, uh, you know, those bugs off. <laughs> he takes those. He cleans us up. He leads us beside streams that will nourish us. He protects us from, uh, from the things that challenge us. But we get to choose. It is the most important choice that we make as a human being. Who is your shepherd going to be? And David says, proudly, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, um, this psalm is so, so powerful. Let's just listen to it here for a moment. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I was reading a version of this in uh, verse 6. And it says, surely goodness and love will follow me. And this version said, surely goodness and love will pursue me. Nice. And I love that because God's goodness, God's love is trying to track you down today. <laughs> it's got your name on it. I love you. My goodness, I really want to extend to you. Will you be a part of my flock? Will you be a part of my pasture of healthy, vibrant, you know, uh, uh, thriving sheep? That's the only kind that God has. It. Yeah. Do we have an injury every now and then? Yes. Do we get thirsty every now and then? Yes. Do we have get hungry every now and then? Yes. Do we need to be, you know, do we need to to, to defend or or ward off, you know, perpetrators? Yes. But all those things are happening. Mm. We have no unwanted, unneeded, unmet need uh, with the good shepherd. In the last few weeks, uh, we've. We've had some, some sermons around the Good Shepherd talking about it. The first one a few weeks ago was entitled Listening. And we were talking about the little, the young boy, Samuel, who was going to this voice that was calling out to him, thinking it was Eli. And when he came back to Eli, though, he realized it wasn't Eli, it was God. And God was calling out to this young boy, Samuel. Have you ever felt that? I know I did, especially growing up, especially when I was in, in those middle school years. And, and, and even now, I hear God calling me. Sometimes I'm not quite sure where it's coming from because sometimes it comes as a longing. Sometimes it comes as a deep pain. Sometimes it comes as, you know, a passage that I read. But I feel God calling me. And it's cool, really cool because eventually what happens with Samuel is he goes to God and he says, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Mm -hmm. That's a great place to learn. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have that kind of spirit. Not speak, Lord. Your servant only got a little bit of time on the rest of my next appointment. That's not when, when, we're, when, we're, when we're really learning from God. Yet that's so often, guys, how we live. We're running to this podcast. We're running to this work appointment. We're running to this thing. We're running over to here. We're running over there. We're running over there. And, and we say, yeah, we're a Christian. And yet we say we're, we're truly trying to, to, to do it God's way. But guys, at, at, at significant times in our day, not in our year, but in our day today, we've got to slow down and say, mm -hmm. speak, Lord. Your servant is not just sort of hearing you kind of talk over the loudspeaker. Yeah. I'm listening. I'm listening. John 10, Jesus talks about the same thing. He says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep listen to me because I know, they know I care about them. They know I love them. They know I'm trustworthy. They know I'm going to come through we know that Jesus died for our sins. And so, and then he rose from the dead. <clears throat> and that's what we talked about a couple weeks ago. We talked about rise. And we talked about, you know, Matthew 14, where, where Jesus deals with his challenges by going to God and getting, getting filled up. It's a very practical, speak, Lord, you're serving his list, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Time for him. He was facing a lot. But he came down... <clears throat> Out of that time, not depressed, not feeling more disconnected, but feeling empowered. And so what does he do as everybody else is afraid? Well, he, he walks on water. Mm -hmm. And so Peter sees this and says, can I come out to you? Mm -hmm. So Peter starts to walk out to him, as we often do. Mm -hmm. Things are going good. Then he starts to put his mind and thoughts on the wind and the waves. What does he start to do? He starts to sink. And so what does Jesus do? He reaches out and he... Puts his hand on his head and he pushes him down, right? Now, he says, you, you, you idiot, I can't believe you're, you call yourself my follower. <laughs> no, he didn't. He takes his hand and he lifts him up. Yep. And, and he rises. And uh, actually, we were talking about that last week. He raised me up so I can walk on water. He raised me up to walk on stormy seas. And that's exactly what Jesus wants to do for us. If we'll let him. If we'll reach out. If we'll... If we'll follow through on, on 
you know, our relationship with him, our apprenticeship to him, our discipleship to him. Yep. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we did talk about rise. And we talked about how Jesus was able to rise from the dead. He was able to face even people who wanted to kill him and say, rise, let's go. Let's take this challenge on. Jesus was a hero. The greatest hero of all time. I hope he's your hero today because he's, he's the best one. He's going to help us to rise. And we talked about how he rose because he walked with and he listened to the God of inspiration. He listened to the God of celebration. He listened to the God of connection. So guys, here's the thing. As we walk with him, this good shepherd, we become more and more like that. Sure. We start to take on those problems. We start to feel stronger. We start to feel more whole. We start to feel like we can face anything. We start to feel like we can, that he's going to raise us up even when we're in tough times. We start to hear his voice saying, you're awesome. You're amazing. I love you. I even like you. <laughs> I like hanging out with you. And you can even say that in your mind. God thinks I'm awesome. God, God treasures me. God thinks I'm valuable. God knows me. And he still wants a relationship with me. And that's powerful. You know, uh, my hope is over this next, in the spring, as we see the world come to life, the, the earth around us come to life, that we can identify with, as we feel ourselves walking with the Creator, come to life. I hope that as we go into the summer, and we go into some of the months that are some of the most brilliant and wonderful in, in Vermont, is that we can internalize those, and we can say, yep, that's where my good shepherd takes me, out in this, in, into green pastures. Where there's plenty. Where God is providing with amazing things. You know, we see that in the Garden of Eden, where God created life to be the good life. He gave us meaningful work. He gave us meaningful relationships. He gave us freedom. He said you're free to eat from anything. He gave us boundaries that were to protect us and help us. And of course, we thought we were better. We thought we knew better. And so we kind of went on to our next. Yeah. Next, uh, our our great wisdom. It kind of ruined everything, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Us following the wrong shepherd. Yeah. Jesus says in, in John chapter 10, he says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. But I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. Yeah. But we've got to intentionally make that choice every day. So here's the thing. Parents, our kids, the most important thing that they see in us is not that we're great church attenders, not that we wear nice clothes on Sundays, not that we show up, you know, at the Easter and Christmas service, but that we try our best. Mm -hmm. And that we give our attention as the priority of our life to walk with the Good Shepherd. And that we're changing, and that we're growing, mm -hmm. and that we're overcoming. You know, we're not perfect, but they see us repenting. Mm -hmm. They see us saying, I'm sorry. They see us saying, I love you. They see us reaching out with, with kindness to our neighbors, <clears throat> to our about, loving our neighbor as ourselves. Yeah. That's what our kids need to see. Mm -hmm. And not just as sort of a church activity, but as who we are. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. That's right. We lack nothing in this house. Mm -hmm. And if we're going through challenges, that's okay, because God's leading us on even to a better place. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's mm -hmm. let's let's talk. You know, let's talk about this. Let's study about this. Let's talk about what's really going on in our hearts mm -hmm. and our minds. And it's going to bring healing to them. It's going to bring strength to them. And yeah, they're going to see through you. They're going to see. Yeah, my dad. He's awesome. I love him. But he's not that strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though he says he is. <laughs> but I'm just glad we call him good shepherd. Because my dad's an okay shepherd. Yeah. You know, with moms, that, yeah, my mom provides me with everything, but it's because uh, she follows a good shepherd. Mm -hmm. I want us to talk for a moment, and I'd like for, for us just to take a moment to write something down, okay? What do you love about your shepherd? What do you love about them? What's in your song? may not be as poetic. may not be the most looked up thing on the internet. 
But what goes in your song? Mm. When you talk about your shepherd and what he means to you. I'd like us just to take a couple moments to think about it. Just write it down. And then I'd like us to, like to take just a couple moments to, to share about it. And we'll do that here in just a moment. Anybody want to share? See, <clears throat> the th first the thing I thought is just God's available 24 7. Mm -hmm. I feel like when I pray morning, noon, or night, it, it, I just feel like even when I don't feel like He's there, I know He's there and He's listening. And, um, you know, compared <clears throat> to the world, you know, I get there's so many times I send an email mm -hmm. for, to support or whatever. You know, for programs or for for whatever, and mm -hmm. you don't you don't get a response, or you make a <clears> phone <throat> call and you don't get a response, or mm -hmm. yep. um, stuff like that. But with God, you can have faith that God's listening, mm -hmm. right. and I, I just love that about Him. That's the first thing I thought about. Mm -hmm. Listen, twenty four seven. Amazing. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, I think like it's His forgiveness that like. Um, that that really uh, like that I love about God. Um, it just reminds me of like the time during the judges when you know the Israelites they would just kind of like mess up and like follow another god, and then God would like give them over to their captors, but they would cry out to Him, and then He would send like a judge to like come rescue them and like restore them, and like this happened like over and over and over, and it just you know. You would think after a while, God would be like, I can't with you guys, like, you know, I'm just done. But it's just like, each time they cried out, like, he just, it's like, he almost forgot, <laughs> like, that they were disobedient. And it's just like, I can, like, see that in my life. It's just like, as many times as I mess up, and like, um, it's just like, God never leaves me, although I feel like, like I deserve for him to leave me. <laughs> um, he just, you know, keeps coming back. And, um, and I think that's... Uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I love about God. And it's just, you know, it really inspires me to kind of like mirror that, that sense of like unconditional love to like other people mm -hmm. and to forgive other people. Um, so it challenges me to do that just because I'm motivated by like Him. Yes. Love it. That's great. Great. Yeah, there. Um, with God, I always feel grounded. Mm -hmm. Like, I, me I remember life before I had committed myself to being a Christian and everything was chaos. Mm -hmm. Trying to find out who I was, trying to find the right group of friends, trying to be, trying to be all things to all people, and never really finding like true peace. You know, and mm -hmm. I just, you know, making that commitment helped me to just realize, wow, I, I don't have to struggle in this, these different areas anymore. I can, I can be me. Mm -hmm. I have a great group of people now around, and mm -hmm. God just put me in that family just by me saying, I just want to be with you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. Rooted. delights in the little things, um, mm. whether it's uh, maybe some type of inside joke you have with God, and he, <laughs> he's, he, do, he brings it along mm. later that day, mm -hmm. or just something to make you smile. I mean, everything is intentional with him. Everything is connected throughout the Bible. I believe that just your day, as long as your, your eyes are open, mm. he's constantly saying, here, here's a little kiss. So true. Little inside jokes. Little details. I love it. I love that he always has 
the big picture for our life in mind mm -hmm. as we go throughout our everyday life. And I think I only am grateful for this, like retrospectively, because I think mm -hmm. at the moment I'm always like, why is this happening right now in my life? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I'm thinking about when we had Juniper, and it was really hard having her during COVID, and like, but when I kind of look back over the past couple of years, it was like the perfect timing for us as a couple to have a baby, mm -hmm. wow. um, you mm -hmm. know, where we were with our families and our careers and things like that. So like looking at the big picture, kind of zooming out, I'm able to see that a little bit more, and I just love that God like always has that in mind. He's always got our big picture. He's, he's able to see everything about our life. Um, so I just think that that's really cool, even if like day to day, I'm not really appreciative of that. <laughs> I can only see kind of the bit, little bit of the zooming out later right. after things have happened after a couple of years. Um, so I just need to be reminded that He's always got that big picture. Yeah, so true. He's guiding us in that, and, and He's and He's got our best interests in mind. I love that. You know, uh, Sue was sharing from uh, 1 Peter, and I'd like you just to keep your finger in Psalm, Psalm 23, and then uh, turn over this passage that we talked about a little bit last week in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to close out here. You know, 1 Peter, of course, was written by Peter. We learn a lot about him in the Gospels here. Peter was, was someone, that, someone that we can relate to because he was impetuous. He was one minute, he was saying, uh, let's go change the world together. I'm with you, heart and soul. The next minute, they, you know, he's, he's whimpering like a little baby over in the corner. Totally. And uh, <laughs> they're not coming through on the stuff. <laughs> and so, you know, but we see Peter honestly becoming this influencer in history like a few others. Because, because he could say like David, the Lord, Masha. Mm -hmm. And even though he's going through all the bumps in the road, and even though he's being a doofus half the time, and even though it's and even though he has great aspirations and he's not able to come through on them. And even though he's sitting down at breakfast after the resurrection and Jesus is going, Do you truly love me? Mm -hmm. And he's asking him some of the probing hard questions. Peter makes it, in fact, he got to the end of his life where they say that he was crucified upside down. Because he was going to be crucified, but he requested that he be crucified upside down because because uh, the Lord was his shepherd, and he didn't want he, he he didn't want to be crucified in the same way that his Lord was. And um, it's powerful because he 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 followed through on this incredible journey that was really really difficult, but was so meaningful. In fact. Peter's life because it was surrendered to the good shepherd. And he talks about this in First uh, Peter chapter two. He talks about, um, he said, you know, he talks about slaves submitting to their their masters with all respect. In verse eighteen, he said, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it's commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it all? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it. This is commendable before God. Of course, these are some of the teachings that, you know, Gandhi based a lot of his teachings on in terms of the civil disobedience, Martin Luther King, in terms of being a people that, that is, is, is not going to be punished for uh, justly for doing wrong, but is going to stand up for what's right and follow through on it. You have the spirit of Jesus. It says in verse 21, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you. Mm -hmm. Leaving you an example that you should know in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. They, when they hurled insult at him, he did not retaliate. Ah, oh, that's tough. Mm -hmm. We want so much to fight our own battles. We want so much to get revenge and to get back. It says, but when he suffered, he made no threats. <coughs> Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly, to his good shepherd. He himself bore our sins in his body on the trees so that we might die to sins and live to righteousness. And, and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. Going over to that pasture because it looked a little bit greener. Going over to this pasture because the, the shepherd offered you a little bit more that day. But whatever that might be, we've gone astray. Just like the guy in, in Luke 15 when he came home. He says, but now you have returned to shepherd and overseer of your souls. 
And I think that is the message of Easter. It's the message of every day. It's that going back to the shepherd of our souls because we tend to wander off. And we tend to wander off at the party we went to last night. We tend to wander off at that, you know, those, that the, the lusts and the temptations of our mind and our hearts. We tend to wander off in, you know, how we're acting at work sometimes, which we know isn't quite really how we should be acting. Mm -hmm. We tend to wander off in our devotions and our priorities. And so God is calling us back. Yeah, again today. It might be the millionth time. <laughs> He's telling us to turn back to him. Back in Psalm 25. If you turn back there. It's two Psalms after Psalm 23. You know, I was going, there was a point in my life when I was, a, uh, when I was going through my seminary training in Tokyo, in Japan. And I was a young man, I was about 25 years old. I was going through a really, really difficult time in my faith. I was going through a difficult time in my growing up. And I decided on a plane ride back to Tokyo that I'm going to do the first thing that I saw Jesus do so I can get my act together and repent. And so the first thing I saw him do was I opened up Mark because I saw him fast for 40 days. And so I said, okay, I probably should open up to a different fast. <laughs> you know. But I opened up to that one, and I heard God's voice speaking to me in that. And so I decided that when the plane landed, I would fast for 40 days. And so I did that. And it was one of the most powerful, cha changing times of my whole life. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a turning point for me. And it wasn't just because of the fasting, although I really think that fasting is great. It helps us to set aside something that's good for something that's better. Like setting aside physical food for, you know... Uh, man doesn't live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so, and so we're taking time to fast from food in order to get something better, which is a closeness to God. Mm -hmm. There's a real value in that. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but it's not really the fasting as much as it is the surrender. It's the surrender to things that are familiar and that are comforting in our flesh to things that are challenging calls to a different place in faith and in the spirit. My theme passage was Psalm 25. And I'd like to, for you to consider this as maybe a theme passage for yourself. Psalm 25, verse 1 says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. And I would think about this every time I was hungry, every time I was getting grumpy and angry, every time I was whatever, going through things. I would think, God, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. This is, this is to get closer to you. This is to know you better. I'm lifting up Steve Schaff to do with me as you want. And there is a real scary part of that. There is also a real comforting, safe place in that. He says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust. O oh my God, do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over so many times during that I felt very weak I felt very, very vulnerable because no one in, whose hope is in you <clears throat> will ever be put to shame but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse listen to this show me your ways O oh Lord teach me your paths mm -hmm. guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God my Savior and my hope is in you all day Remember, O oh Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. And I would really like to ask us, as a community, to adopt this as a spirit in our lives. This very simple, show me your ways, O oh Lord. And for us to pray those, those words, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, you are God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I lack nothing. And so let's consider those things as we take even communion today, because what we're taking is something that represents the blood of your good shepherd. That's how that's 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 his commitment to you. That's his commitment to me. That's the blood of your of your shepherd. <clears throat> and then take the, 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 the bread and remember it's it, it's it's it represents the body of your shepherd. The shepherd's not up in some Crystal Cathedral, he's down right there next to you, facing all the same things that you're facing in the flesh, in real time. 
suffering for us. Because he's right there next to you. He's in it. And you guys are carrying a yoke together. You're carrying this load together. Mm-hmm. He's in there with you. He's, he's your best, best cheerleader. Amen. And so when we take the bread, saying, no, Jesus, God became flesh and dwelt among us. You could touch him. You could hug him. Mm-hmm. You could know him. And now he's available even, even closer because he's available in his spirit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so he can walk with us all the time. Mm-hmm. He guides all the time. So as we take communion, Let's remember those things. Mm-hmm. And I want to encourage us to go back to God, even though you may have done it already this morning, mm-hmm. and just say, hey, God, let's meet again. And your mind will change. And you are like God. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Jesus, you're my good shepherd. And I trust you mm-hmm. completely. Mm-hmm. Teach me. Show me your ways. Teach me your truth. And let's continue to do this thing together. Yeah. Let's pray and let's take communion. Father, thank you so, so much that you're our shepherd. It's incredible. We get to live the good life because you're so faithful to us. Thank you for Jesus. Father, help us to draw closer to you than we've ever been in this moment because we take this communion with a whole heart. Unto you, O Lord, we lift up our souls.